we said that the server authentic authenticates the client, the client authentication, common way is using password based. So an example of that, again I secure shell into ICT and we'll not log in, we'll just run a command. And first problem, my client cannot authenticate the server. It received the public key, but it doesn't know if it's a correct public key. I must manually verify. So what I would do is go to the server and find this fingerprint, see if it matches. If it matches, I'd type yes. If it doesn't match, match I'd type no. Now, for the server to verify the client, it asks for a password. And I type in the password. So that's the client authentication step, password based. The user supplies their password and the server lets them in if it's correct. That was on ICT. Let's do it on a different server. It's coming, okay. Password less authentication. Again, no password. I connected to this server and ran a command and I didn't supply a password. So how does the server know it's someone who's allowed to access the server if I'm not supplying a password? How does the server authenticate it's, it's someone who's allowed to access? What form of client authentication can we perform if we don't use a password? We can use keys, right? public-private keys. So the other approach of authentication is key-based authentication. So what I've set up in advance is that my client has a public-private key pair and my public key is loaded into the server. The server knows my public key. So when I contact that server, I encrypt a message using my private key, and the server verifies that using my public key to confirm that it's actually me. Because the only person who could encrypt using my private key is me. So this is key-based authentication. You don't need a password to log in but it requires some setup in advance. What was the setup? Uh, first on the client, on the client we said that the client has its own RSA key pair. It's RSA public key and it's RSA private key. I'll show you my public key, not my private key. There it is, encoded in a way to save in a text file, but that's my RSA public key. What I've done in advance is copied that to the server. Let's check. So I'll log into the server. So in advance on the server, There's a file called authorized keys. This file lists on the server the public keys of clients which are authorized to access this server. And inside there, maybe many, I'm not sure, there are multiple there. One of them, if you look closely, will correspond to my laptops. So the idea. with key-based authentication or password-less authentication with Secure Shell. The client has its own, I'll be specific, RSA in this case public and private key pair. 
and the server knows the client's public key. How does it know it? I manually copied it there in advance. And that must be done in a secure manner, manner so it must be done in a trustworthy manner, but uh, there are commands that do, do that. But if we manually load that RSA public key of the client, then when the client tries to access the server in one of the messages, and I don't have a capture for that, in one of the messages the client sends some message which is encrypted with the RSA private key. And what's encrypted uh, doesn't matter, it, it's just it's signed essentially, some data. Some known data. Okay. So this is in the key exchange at the start. And the server knows it's the correct client and it verifies. It decrypts, let's say this is some value x that we receive, it decrypts that X value with the RSA public key of the client. That is, the client signs a message when it sends to the server. It's signed with the private key of the client. If it successfully verifies with the public key of the client, then that message must have came from that client. And because the server's already approved anyone that contacts me with this corresponding private key, it can log in. Then now the server verifies, ah, this is the correct client. It's not someone pretending to be this client. Let them log in. No need to ask for, for a password. So we can use key-based authentication to do logins to remote servers. Yep. So in this case, how does the server really know that RSA PUC is the public key of the client? Same question as when we authenticate the server. How does the client know that the RSA public key of the server is that of the server? We don't unless we have some manual verification. All right. So we need to load this public key onto the server. We need to do that in a secure manner or in a ma manner in which we trust it. That is, we could be, have access to both computers via some other means and, and read the value and, and check the fingerprint. Yeah. We could use certificates, but that would require some authority to be set up. And in Secure Shell, we generally don't use, uh, require some authorities because it's not the, uh, so convenient to use that when we're accessing different servers. So usually it's sufficient to manually transfer it or to verify. That is, verify with it first using a username and password and then verify, ah, that's the correct one and therefore we trust this public key. So that's password less logins or key-based or client authentication. <coughs> 